Well, what I remember of, of the uh, Peter Kenyon, I think it eventuated through the uh, Economic Development Committee, the Beautification Committee, combined with council, but uh, it came up with Peter Cleverley to uh, see who we could find to run some sort of a consultation with the community, having the key people of the district involved. And uh, he came up with Peter, who uh, obviously very professional in his, in his attitude and his experiences, and he was able to draw the people out into thinking of where they needed to go in the next 20, 25 years. We as councillors were all there. Uh, even council workers were there. We had the town builders, um, bank managers, people who owned businesses because their future was what it was all about. And uh, it, it was a good cross-section. Farmers, particularly, they were very interested in it. And uh, I think that's what gave us the confidence. If we had, were able to save our town for the demise of what other towns were going through, we had a chance in the future um, with economic development. Businesses, new businesses created that would bring people. There was a good promotions committee in the town over the years and there was a traders or the chamber of commerce. Um, they were very active through the uh, 60s, 70s, 80s. They were great and it all just culminated into this really good first time I'd ever seen a, a community meeting such as it was. It was brilliant. And it was all due to uh, well run by Peter Kenyon. It was wonderful. We are a spot on the map that had a highway running through the centre of it, which was to be tapped into and to get them to leave a few dollars behind on their way. And... That's what it developed. The three things you needed in a town was a good baker, good toilets, and a junk shop. Well, the concept came down from a trip we did to uh, Western Queen or Central Queensland from Springshaw. There was a beautiful big windmill there, and uh, we'd seen it and we got photos of it and brought it back and put it in to the debate and. Uh, it, being a windmill and pumping water out of the ground was the concept of what the district survived on it, it or even developed from. There was no water, there was no, going to be no town and uh, the wells and need, the story needed to be told of what, how that this whole area of the Western Wimmera developed. The toilet and change rooms, that was uh, uh, offering something to the travelling public. Uh, it was a very, very good building. It had the uh, baby's change room on it and good clean toilets. And incidentally, it was uh, designed by a local person in the name of Judith Meir. And then I suppose the uh, tourist shop, the information centre was the other one. that, went, And we had it all there in, the, in that square of Madden Street and Commercial Street that it was all there together and it, uh, it was a good concept. Well, if people come there, you need to show them what you've got. And I suppose that was in those days, it was the little desert, uh, the big desert. It was the uh, Moree and Billio, uh, Bill's Gully. Uh, they were the features of the district. And we needed to get that information to the people who stopped and had a look. Once you stop them, you've got a chance of, of getting them into the tourist centre with a, with a meal or a cup of coffee or whatever. They'll stop and have a look. They're fascinating. People want to know what, how the place ticks. How did all that? Well, that became uh, a branch on from uh, Glenis Champness, was an instigator of the beautiful... Uh, the, Beautification Committee, which uh, evolved. We got the key people out of the Garden Club, which of Glenis and Mrs Brooks and quite a few others. And that put together gradually with council and council councillors and relevant people on that committee, 
we were able to start getting some coordination into the into the watering points. So, so everything was uh, not going to just be planted and died, and it was it was well planned. And you'd look at uh, Bell's Reserve, and then down to the uh, Fauna Park. Yes, it, it would not have happened without without community input, and the Garden Club were fantastic. They had a lot of members and uh, knew what they were doing, planning at that time the right things. We did a trip on a little bus, I think Norton's bus, and we did a trip around the northern part of Victoria. And uh, we I think we were about three nights and we had members of the Garden Club, we had members of the Economic Development Committee. I've got to remember, I think we went to Birchip, we went to Echuca, we went down Rochester, around to Maryborough, and looked at what they were doing. And we came back with a lot of good ideas, and I think the bollards were, that's probably where it emulated. And... Uh, People were offered, families of the district, former families, whether they would like to put money towards them and have their names put. Uh, something that would last for many, many years. I remember the, the old gas lamp light that was in front of the Lulama Hall. What, how valuable that was. Yes, well, by the committees we had established when I say beautification, economic development. Uh, land care was another one where the farmers were involved in that. And they were the people that were making the ideas and taking it back to their numbers. And it was all coordinated. People got what they thought should happen. And that was the most important part about the project right through. Well, it took a few years to, for it to, to develop. You can't, couldn't rush in and uh, hit the budget too hard. So it was allocated in, in budgets year after year and we gradually got to the stage. The uh, footpaths had, in the main shopping centre hadn't been done when I left council, but it was enough for planning that it was in estimates and it was done. So that was a great thing. Uh, so it was probably over a five-year plan that it was all implemented.